Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Shirtless Plantain Show. I'm your host, Tosin. Alongside me today is Dean and Coach. As always, fellas, how y'all doing today? I'm just happy, you know, that I'm alive. And, you know, I really love my cat. But the football this weekend. <laughs> oh, man. Ar- Arsenal lose this weekend. This nigga don't know how to act no more. Now he's talking about his cat, his dogs, his chickens. Okay, okay, old McDonald had a farm ass <laughs> nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, they was playing hungry hungry hippo all weekend and shit man, crazy, man. Yeah. Well, let, let's get to the football man let's get the faster we rip this bandit off the the sooner we can move on to the champions league or some shit man because it's been a while since we fought this way coach as arsenal fans it's been a while so yeah we had a good we'll, run we'll, we'll get to y'all let's start off in I'm germany quiet i'll be back in one second just carry on without me this way <laughs> 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 nigga, get back. <laughs> get the fuck back on camera, nigga. I ain't got time for this shit. <laughs> Let's go to Germany. Dortmund 2, St. Pauli 1. Um, so another underwhelming performance in Dortmund. Um, I got the alert on my phone that Dortmund got scored on when they got taken away, so I pay attention to the game, and, you know, they won. But um, this one is for you, Coach, because I know you were mentioning the St. Pauli equalizer. So, Thunder Bastard Lovers Unite. We have another one, right? What Smith done was pure and utter violence. The ball travelled, to my estimations, at least 60 to 70 miles per hour. I'm sure of it. It, it flew. Um, but I will say, I, I can't stop, help but be impressed with Goresi just being their talisman. Like he's come in and he's just, he's, he's their guy. Like, I'm just very, I'm very pleased and very happy for him, man. Well, he was kind of wank in this game, though. I mean, he got the winning goal and all, but before exactly. that, he was fucking terrible. He was terrible. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's the point. That's the, that's what the good strikers do. Like, have a shit game. Just you know, I, I do what nobody else can do and win the game for my team. Like, that's that, that's job description, man. Yeah, that's true. Whatever. Dean, <laughs> Dean, I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, now the new newly minted, which we never talked about, by the way, England coach. Uh, mm-hmm. Thomas Tuchel. You think he's going to call up Jamie Bino Giddens? Well, if he watches the Bundesliga at all, I can't see why he wouldn't. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at people like, well, Grealish played well in one of those games and one of the last four games England played, but I'm thinking if the competition is Anthony Gordon and who else on the left side? Rashford. Um, he loves Marcus Rashford, by the way. Uh, this is what I was going to say. Grealish, Sancho. <laughs> oh, we're gonna talk about that nigga later. <laughs> yeah. Just you know, there's a, there's a few players there. There's a few but, players but, there. I mean, what do you think, Coach? You're the Englishman. Um, no, no, think, <laughs> no, 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 genuinely, no, not even, not even in a rude way. But there's players that people want in this England squad are not making England squads right now. You see what I'm saying? So he uh, is so far down the pecking order in terms of just the players that have got England caps that are still young, that are still playing starters for their clubs kind of thing, that can't get in the team. You know, someone like a, like a, a fair weather footballer, like, a, what's his name? Like James Madison. You know what I'm saying? Like, he will be picked before my man at Dortmund, I'm sorry to say. Um, I, I don't, I feel like this is, I feel like this is a value of having a German as the English coach. Hmm. I'm hoping that for England's sake, I'm hoping that it means yeah. he focuses on things like form as opposed to yeah. reputation and what the Daily Mail wants. Because I'm mm. sure Thomas Tuchel watches the Bundesliga. And yeah, if he's been watching it like we've been watching it, Jamie Gittens has been killing all season. He's in yeah. better form than anyone we've mentioned since we first said his name. So I'm hoping he gets a chance. I think he's ready. Yeah, well, I, I mean, agree with you. I, I mean, I, I just, I, I don't see it. You don't I see don't it? See it. Yeah, but, he, but he, I, I would like to be surprised, but I, I just don't see it. Well, put it this way. If he sustains his form from now to January when Tuku actually starts, I, I think it might be hard for him to ignore him because, I mean, Dortmund is not a small team. I mean, no. Jude was getting, getting caps when he played at Dortmund. So yeah. why not? Why not? He's been good. Yeah, and it's not the first time a German's taken over England. Um, anyway, Leverkusen 2, Frankfurt 1. Uh, our boy Uma Mamouche, uh, he scored a penalty. Oh. And I love that name, man. We just love Uma Mamouche here. <laughs> yeah. That's the the first goal... The first goal that um that Leverkusen scored to equalize was really really good. Um, yeah. Love the love the passing sequence is really good. And then um our boy, he's had a hell of a week, man. Uh, mm. Bunny face. He's got the yeah. winner. Got in a car accident afterwards. I'm not sure if you guys saw that. I was a really he missed, hard. He missed the penalty leading up to that. <laughs> yeah. 
had a really, really, really bad car accident. And the week before, he was trapped in Libya. Um, so, yeah, his uh, local people must be doing juju on him because... You know, you know what that suggests? He should stay his ass in the fucking house, okay? Y'all niggas been outside too much, man. There's global warming out there, okay? It's making the cars fucking melt and go off the road and shit. It's making niggas miss penalties. Stay your ass home and pray and be a good Christian man and everything will work out for you. But as a, as a player, he's killing this season, man. He looks fantastic. <laughs> Dances too. <laughs> he's, 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 still my, <laughs> he's still my favorite one v one striker. Um, I think he's. I just the no, he's the of, best. No, he's the yeah. best. Call it what it is. Like nobody yeah, is seeing him when he's when it comes to squaring up a defender as a number yeah. nine with a big physique, not like a yeah. tricky winger type player. If you're a exactly. number nine in Europe, nobody is seeing Victor Boniface when it comes to one on one. He's cooking niggas every time. And the thing is, you know what's funny? He 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 was talking about players. I forgot. I I know he named Neymar. I know he named Neymar. But he named like three players that he watches on YouTube regularly, right? And he tries to learn that he tries to learn their tricks and like. And it comes out in the games. Like it's very obvious that this guy is a uh, is first and foremost an entertainer. <laughs> yeah, you know. Imagine, imagine how much more he would entertain us if he stayed inside. <laughs> <laughs> what did what did Earl, what did Earl Sweatshirt say? I don't like shit. I don't go outside. Mm-hmm. Don't, yes, yeah. yes. Don't go outside, my nigga. That's, that's how you master your craft. Stay yes. inside. Coach, question for you: uh, Do you think Frankfurt's going to uh, get one of the Champions League spots in Germany? Do you know what? There's, there's, there's always a, a good chance a team surprises in Germany. I think Stuttgart was the, was the one last year. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. Like between uh, Ikite and um, Mamush, that's that's not, if they stay fit, that's that yeah. could be a a very very you know a very good basis of of how you build your team for the, for the season. Like them guys will get you goals. They'll win you games. Let's see how it goes in it. Like. But yeah, potentially. I I won't say no to it for sure. Um, we have the battle of Jurgen Klopp's heart, Mines versus Leipzig. Um, we also have another battle of Jurgen Klopp's heart later, which we'll talk <laughs> about as well. But Leipzig beat uh Mines two zero. Mines fans were upset and uh, some people responded back saying, Well, look what you did to the uh guy that who scored over the weekend. Um why am I forgetting his name? I'm Waro so- Gazi. Yes, yes. Elgazi, yes. Um, but it was Orban and uh Zavi Simmons who scored, so Good for them. Anything y'all take away from this game? Um, I just really hope mines get relegated, man. Like there's there's nothing there's there's nothing that I, I'd want more outside of our Arsenal league the title. The is bro. eternal, bro. I'm telling you, our grandkids can get it on, man. Like we <laughs> <laughs> can get it on. <laughs> that's 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 what that's what that matters, man. But yeah, I'm yeah I'm pleased for Javi Simmons. Um, he's still on loan, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. This shit is really is is really not like connecting in my head like you can't be a player of that level and you're just on loan you see what i'm saying like that that shit doesn't make sense he should be either the main man they should have bought him already they should have bought him already, or he should be the main man at somewhere else i have like, a question for you go on. A, do leipzig have that sort of money number one number two are you gonna tell psg ceo no <laughs> I've met him before. That nigga scared me. <laughs> Listen, I I thought he was a I thought he was a Bond villain. The way he like left and dipped, I was like, nah, you good, man. I've, so I've seen when PSG get scored and they pan to him. Like he's he's intense as fuck. He's he's literally staring into someone's <laughs> Yes, <laughs> he's staring into someone's soul. Like. And the bro. thing is, he's just like that in person too. Like I, I like he's a scary man. So I'm. I'm, I'm I'll, I'll put it this: I am not convinced that PSG are going to are going to utilize him at all. I, I'm not convinced at all. Like looking at what they signed in midfield as well already, with the ages of those players as well. Are they going to bring him in as well? Like I don't, I don't see it. They're gonna, they I should, feel, they should tell up. I feel like ultimately the choice is the players. Like yeah. I, I don't know where he's going to end up. Probably won't be Leipzig at the end of the day, but it won't be mm. PSG either. You know, so he's coming to England. The one thing I'll say before we move on about this team, they play a 4-4-2, and we've been saying this over and over again, um, a theme of our podcast, nothing in football is new. Everything is cyclical. Uh, so can I listen fair, to you? So 4-2-2-2-2-2-2-2. Yeah. As you more niggas say, Q. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah, I, do you know, do you like, know what? Like, Zegana Avenue? <laughs> You're you're both you're both kind of right. I feel like in phases it does go to a four four two, but mostly they do play in those 
like three banks where it's like we've got our two defensive midfielders, we've got our two attacking midfielders, we've got our two strikers kind of thing. But yeah, it, it's it's still it's still one of the funnest like setups for me to watch genuinely. So yeah, uh. and the uh, last game of the weekend in Germany that we I'm gonna cover is Bayern and Stuttgart. Um, Bayern mm. beat the shit out of them. But Harry Kane got a hat trick, and um, that's really all she wrote. I mean. Yeah, his second hat trick of the season. Um, they just thrashed them. Um, you know, we have a lot of love for Stuttgart here, but yeah, Dean, I want you to take this away because I don't like talking about bullying. I know, man. Sebastian Honus and his boys got hold because they they didn't have a lot of moments. I think in the first half they stayed in the game. I'll give mm-hmm. them credit for that. They probably had the best chance in the first half, but it got blazed over the bar. I think that was Silas. I'm not sure. I remember. Watch so much football, man. This cannot be health for us, guys. We need to talk about football <laughs> here. Uh, but in the second half, like Harry Kane, the first one was from outside the box. Great finish. You know, he's one of the best ball strikers we've ever seen. And after that, was, one was opportunistic. The other one, I can't really remember, but um, Byron were just okay. on top of They were of both opportunistic. It was, it was <laughs> they were both opportunistic. The other two? Yeah. yeah, yeah. well, that's what Harry does, you know. So um, I guess... I'm more curious about, you know, because they're playing this system that almost feels like, you know, a lot of the team, the big teams in Europe are playing, the positional teams at least play like that, three, two, five in possession. Mm-hmm. And Byron, it feels like they're playing almost like a two, two, six. Like, do we think they're going to keep that in Europe when the games get serious, when we get to the knockout stage? Are they going to try that against actual good teams? Are they, they're playing, they're playing um, Boston next, isn't it? Is yeah. Is Boston they're playing? Yeah, I think. they are. I think yeah. they're going to the, to the Montjuke. Yes. Yeah, so... It'll be good to see what company does um, against against a team in in the form that Barcelona are in and that have the weapons that Barcelona currently have as well. Yeah. So let's see if he's that brave. Yeah. What I saw from them versus Aston Villa, I saw a team that's got really good, experienced players, but is headed up by a young coach. Basically, um, there was a little bit of naivety there. So let's see how it goes against the the seasoned team. But yeah, I'm yeah that, that two two six. Shit that they're doing when they're over aggressive and shit. If he does, if he does carry that on to the, I suppose to the, um, to the knockouts and shit like that, they're not going to get very far. I don't think you've got to be a little bit more conserv- it's, conservative. It's, it's, it's very, it's very Germany in 1939. He needs to tone that down. <laughs> yeah, a bit, you know? like, like be more Belgian, less German, my guy. Please, make it my no, mind. don't do, don't do that because we act like King Leopold. Um, <laughs> coach to add. To add to your point, uh, he is a young coach. He dresses like he's in Dipset and uh, D Block, as you said. <laughs> uh, by the yeah. way, pa- Pavlovich is out for the next few weeks. He broke his collarbone. Yeah, he is such an unlucky yeah. young player. He got sick before the Euros. Now he did this. Mm-hmm. Um, who do you think comes in? Do you think we finally get to see uh, Palinia? Because they spent a lot of money on him to not be using him. Who knows, they, man? Well, Company's think, rude. They, they absolutely should. They absolutely should. And it should be interesting to see what they do in the week as well, again with Boston, because he's not being there. Are they going to try to play Kimmich there? Because I'll be very real with you. The form that Pedri's in, like, he's going to run rings around that little man. So let's be sensible here and let's put a gate man on Pedri and let Kimmich just be a right back. Like, he's my one him to be all this time. So. Yo, if, <laughs> if Polina plays that game, he's going to jail after because that boy can harass <laughs> like nobody. God damn. Like, I saw him. I saw him fingering Martin Odegaard one game, man. It was crazy, bro. Like, that nigga is a, he's a beast, bro. He's a beast. Yeah. Like, Yo, he is like Bobby Valentino slow down. Just <laughs> <Yeah>. aggressive. <laughs> Your harassment. Just straight you know, harassment. You know, he's actually, he's the embodiment of Griselda Records between 2017 to like 2023. Just harassment of, of releases every Friday. Every like you, you turn your corner, you're gonna see, you're gonna see a Griselda record. That's what it's gonna be like in midfield. You're gonna turn your face and you're gonna see Polina. They're sweating in your face. Like... Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> um, let's move over to Italy. Speaking of harassment, uh, hmm. Juventus beat Lazio one zero. I don't even know who we wanted to win this game, but Juventus did. Um, they left it late. They got an own hmm. goal. Uh, Dusan Vlaovic was active throughout the game. Hmm. Might have deserved the goal, but hey, Juventus at top of the league now with Inter and. Um, hmm. They don't get scored on. Isn't that insane? Like, they don't get scored on, like, at all. Yeah. Feels like UV Heritage. It feels, it feels, it feels right. It feels like, yeah, it feels like Thiago Motta has, that's the basis of, of any success that he's going to have at UV. Make sure that we're hard to beat and, and we go from there. Um, yeah. Um, I, was it that I, game that there was a record? Coach, there was real quick. 
going. I think it's really interesting that when these young coaches are coming up, they always get yeah. props for what their teams do with the ball. Mm -hmm. But really, when you break it down, the reason why we pay attention to them in the first place, why their teams are winning, is because mm -hmm. the defense is good. That's the first yeah. basis. You know, like if it's Arteta, Xabi Alonso, uh, Thiago Mott, like they all do the same mm -hmm. thing, but we all get hyped up by the fact that their teams are playing this attractive. But mm -hmm. they all are sensible men that are like, no, I need some gate men in there. I need to lock the back. Then we build from there. You know, you can't, yeah. you can't really build an attractive team without structure. A good defensive yeah. structure. You know, so. Eric Ten Hag says no to that. Um, <laughs> by the way, I made a mistake. Napoli on, Napoli on top of Serie A. Um, yeah. My fault. That's why I you're the best. Mind. Yeah, I don't mean to mislead the people. Milan won Udinese in zero. I love this game mostly because the Nigerian scored on another Nigerian. Mm -hmm. um, so, Christian Pulisic speaks fluent Italian now. Yeah, and you got the assist in this one, too. Yeah. I <laughs> don't care. <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened in the game, nigga? Goddamn. <laughs> um... <laughs> But yeah, I mean, Chukwueze scored, and um, I don't know. They got a red card. Uh, your boy got a red card. Um, what's his name? Um, his name? Rangers. Brandon. Rangers so, got a red card. So, so here's the thing: between the Lazio game and this game, and there was another. I believe there was another game in Italy as well. Actually, yes, it was. It was the well, it was a penalty actually in the Napoli game, which we'll get to. But I don't think the Rangers. I don't think it was a red card. It, it's such a. It's one of those things where they're running for, they're both running for the ball. It's just a coming together. If these sorts of tackles, right, it just feels like if you're an attacker, you're guaranteed to get the foul. Like you're both running for the ball. You've got ahead of them. Is the player supposed to stop running all of a sudden? You see what I'm saying? Let's let you through. He's supposed to carry on his, his striders. Or yeah, he's going to put his hand, like take his hands out of the way and shit like that. But it, those ones where they run across, across the play, I want them to, them to apply some common sense there. Like it's, it's not just, it's not. It's not like exclusive to one country. It seems to be across the board. And no matter where you play in Europe, if you if you're in that position, you're getting a red card every single time. Yeah, I mean the referees well, don't give well, a well, damn. Well, 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 from Chelsea, actually, but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, Milan. They fought. They fought their ass off and got three points. So mm -hmm. fair enough. They rotated a little heavier though. Um, mm -hmm. I think they're just trying to keep fresh for Champions League this week when they play against Brug. Mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy for Chukwes. I mean, he's been struggling on that right side, like, but you know, hopefully it's a turning point because he's been looking consistently inconsistent. If that's the one thing I can say about his time at Milan, like he would show flashes, um, but just doesn't do well. Um, Fofana stepped up though, so he was looking good in midfield, and mm -hmm. Pulisic and Okafor did well, and uh, Fonseca got it right. I know Milan fans from time to time get upset in the timeline about Fonseca, but who else? The, who else hates their manager? Everyone hates their manager, so it seems. I, I will say I think I do I do see a an upturn if you like in in their form because there was rotations there obviously but you still look at who they brought off the bench Tomori Musa Abraham Ruben, Ruben Loftus Cheek like there's enough there for for Seca to work with to actually get them you know where they need where they need to go I'm not saying they're going to win the league but a top four should be the minimum requirement oh, for oh, sure. Oh, now they're not going to win the league. Okay. I never said they, I never said they would. I said they, I just said they'll do well. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, fighting me, nigga. Okay. <laughs> I would be here. I would be here. I would be here. Dane, uh, this next game is for you, particularly. Uh, Fiorentina, they beat Lecce 6-0. And guess who didn't score? Moise King. He never <laughs> scores. Like, he's a, he's a fucking... He's a fraud, bro. Like, he... He needs to leave the game and stop playing and go into management and manage a club like, and I mean like upper level management, like actually be a coach. He should be like Juan Laporta, someone like that, like a Raul Sanlehi, because he's, he's stealing. Man. How are you a striker with those physical tools and you can't finish? No matter where you play, no matter who you've played for. Like, I don't understand him. He doesn't make sense to me as a player. He's like, he's like if you racially abuse Alvaro Morata until he was depressed enough to never score a goal ever. Like, that's what Moise Keane is. I don't understand it because he looks like he should be good and he never scores. Your team scored six goals and you're the striker and you didn't score. You didn't assist. You look at the clubs he played for as well, they clearly see the talent. Like, he, he's gone, to, he's played for some of the biggest clubs around, genuinely, like... Mainly he, Everton. Yeah. But you, but you know what I mean? But like, he's been at Juve, been at PSG, been at... Um, who else did he play for in Italy? Oh, um, Hellas Verona. Well, you know, but you know what I'm saying. Like he's that these clubs clearly see there's something there's something there. I just don't know 
when he will put it together. I've I've lost faith in the guy. To be nah, honest, I don't see I, it. From, I, bro. I'll tell you when. Never. Let's <laughs> move on. Um, Napoli beat Empoli. Oh, Atalanta. Excuse me. Um, they beat Venezia two zero. Um, Venezia's kids aren't good, by the way. Um, but it's neither here nor there. No. Uh, Rategi is Syria's current top scorer, and he was Oof. an utter menace. And he scored a chip. Um, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you, niggas, man. <laughs> That shit was I'm, fired. I'm, I'm getting hard. That shit was crazy. <laughs> like, I haven't seen a chip, like, because I feel like most of the chips you see nowadays are a little bit further from goal. You know, like, mm. where there's space to actually get it over the goalkeeper, put it in behind him because goalkeeper came off the line. Everyone plays off their line these days. This shit, the goalkeeper was right there, and he was mm. like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me show y'all something new. Like, yeah. I have seen this dude, like, he popped up basically, like, last year. Um, mm-hmm. he, like, he's Argentine, but he plays for Italy or whatever. Mm. And he was at Genoa. Then he moved to, I think, Atalanta now. Mm. And I've seen him score literally every kind of goal. Mm-hmm. Like in the one year that I've been watching him, it's it's like watching Hernan Crespo again or some shit, man. He's mm. incredible. He's incredible. And he has eight and eight for Atalanta. So yeah, the kid is the kid is balling. Um, him, and... him or Lautaro Tosin, who who getting that uh Capo Can- Canonieri? You think I'm gonna ever bet against Lautaro? <laughs> <laughs> Not in this life. <laughs> You can roll your eyes all you want. That's my nigga. <laughs> I, I, I'm honestly, I just don't. Uh, I've, I've never been so disinterested in a in a top player. Seriously, like I just. Bro, he's literally a, a fucking Latin version of Jonathan David. Like, why are you so <laughs> mad? It's the same fucking player, man. Dude, dude, same you shit haircut. Do, you're not. No, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just whoa, different whoa. hair textures, man. It's just different hair texture. It's the same haircut. No, 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 no. Otoro's Otor- Otor- got the shittest haircut I quite I've ever seen. Seriously, Jonathan David just obviously needs a, a taper fade potentially. I don't know, but this one here, I don't. Know. He's gone to the okay. Jonathan David hasn't gone to the bar, but this guy's gone to the bar and asked for it. He's that's what makes it worse. He's asked for that bullshit. But guess what? When you go score twenty goals three seasons in a row, you can do whatever you want. Jonathan um, David done the same shit as well, bro. I don't care. <laughs> 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 Billy zero, Napoli one. Uh, Kavar got a penalty. Conte's men are back at the top of the table. Billy Gilmore had his full debut, mm-hmm. and they look like a Conte team. I think that's the biggest compliment I can pay them. Yeah, they they didn't do much in this match, but they got the points, and was that, it a pen, that is the most Conte thing ever. <laughs> was it a pen? Of course, what, it was a pen. What do you? What else do you think it was? <laughs> honestly, I've seen some shit this weekend. Anyway, like the PGMO are, are, are a virus. They're infecting everybody else. Because I've seen, I've seen some bullshit across the leagues this weekend for real. Like, I, that, that's the that's a softer shit pen to me. Very soft pen. But it was a pen. It was a pen. I think I think you're just tripping because the nigga that tripped the nigga was Nigerian or some shit. But it was a pen. Like, I mean, it's it's more of a pen than most of the other pens this weekend. I'll give you that. But it was a pen. Yeah. It was indeed. Uh, I think. Our last game in Syria, Inter beat Roma 1-0, which is a feature match. And guess who scored? My boy, Lataro. I mean, obviously, it hit off the ballers back. But guess what? Goals are goals, baby. And they got three points. So, I, I just want to say for Tazy, it's, it's just a shameless goat. <laughs> like, that, it was, I don't know what... If, if, if I was Lataro, I wouldn't have scored. I said, I'm not... I don't, I don't care if the ball's bouncing me. That you don't give me that shit. I'm not. I'm not gonna give you. I'm not gonna give you any props for that because you ran all that way. You've looked up. You've even made the wrong decision because you angled your run wrong anyway. So you ran. You ran further away from goal anyway. So so you can't even cross it properly now. And then you serve up that that lazy ass shit. And I have to do all the rest of the hard work. Fuck all of that, man. I would have said. I would have picked it up. I would have picked it to the ball and said, "Nah, let's start again." Like, it was so annoying, honestly. Like it was just bullshit, man. Like hey, man. he's such a goat. I feel like I feel like you just described the great assist. <laughs> it's all oh, cool, man. It all counts, baby. Fuck out of here. <laughs> just some it was some bullshit, man. Yo, by, the, by the way, um, two things. One, Bastoni is balding fast. <laughs> it's bad. He is. It's it's. He's looking like Conte ninety four World Cup. It's bad. Uh, but I have to say, it's worth it. Yeah. Because that guy, <laughs> for being being that size and being that good with your feet and that creative as a centre back, I think it was a worthy sacrifice. Genuinely, no, <laughs> I said I said Barella, not Bastoni. Oh, Barella, Barella is balding. Oh, Bastoni, I said Barella. Yes. Oh. 
Bastoni, on the other hand, there was a take the other day. Um, forgot her name, but she basically said that, you know, the best on the 25 play, she explained it really well. It was Bastoni. I was like, I agree. I was like, Bastoni is incredibly underrated. He's a phenomenal center back. He, he put the fact that I'm that that Calafiori is 21, 22. I'm saying I what that's your role model there. And this this guy is quite literally 24 years old himself. Like, that's the highest compliment I can play. I can pay Bastoni. And if a center, if a center back is going to move the near future for close to 100 million, it, it's going to be him. Like, for sure, he is the, the next 100 million defend 100 million pound defender if there is one right now. Like, he's just top draw. I tell you like this. He cook at the pasta. For, oh my, listen, <laughs> he might even cook. He might even cook at the pizza as well at this rate. Like, I, I he's too Take, nice. Take at the pizza. Like you, you look, you look at, you look at um, Inzaghi's game model kind of thing, and it's yeah, you've got Chanahoglu, you've got Mkhitaryan, and you've got Lautaro that are supposed to be that like, they're the space monsters, if you like, in terms of picking the ball up in space and making shit happen, kind of thing. You got Fratesi and Demarco like ghosting into space and shit like that. But Bastoni is a creative hub on his own. <laughs> the, the creative hub. It's fucked. It's actually fucked when you think about it. Like it, it reminds me, it's, it's almost like a from the tapes that I've seen anyway, it's almost like Beckenbauer in some cases. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Like it's it's really, very, really very liberal style player. Yeah, man. It's I, I always I legit tune into Inter mostly because of him, which is Arteta might have made me a sick man. <laughs> <laughs> He's over getting excited over center backs, but not Bastoni. <laughs> Bastoni. Bastoni's that guy, man. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, let's go to Spain. Real Madrid two, Celta Vigo one. Um, just Madrid got outplayed and they won. Um, and Mbappe scored a really good goal. But there was a there was a thing that Mbappe did that pissed me off. Mm-hmm. I don't know what minute it was, but Jude drove the ball right, mm-hmm. and this guy. Stops in the middle of the field and asks for the ball instead of him to keep his run going. Mm. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Just keep running. And Amen. he just... Listen, it's it's a successful team, mm. but there are a lot of egos over there, man. Mm. It's a team of divas. Like, every every other game I see Jude, like, throw his hands up at somebody. Like, they're not players that have won things before he got there. Like, it's just what it is. I think you just got to chalk it up to the game. It's egos. It's passion. They're still winning, so it's not ever really going to be a real problem. But it is kind of gross to see, you know, like especially for those of us that root for teams where we're like, oh, team spirited. That's why we're winning. And you see these a fucking group of overly talented assholes just like, fuck it. We win anyway. You know, so, you know, it's whatever. But it's it's Madrid. It's Madrid, you know. And honestly, we're due a big team that has like some locker room drama. Shit has been too quiet lately, man. And I hope it's Madrid. It probably won't be, but I really hope it's there. Yeah, man. It's going it's, it's, it's to be Bayern, like, like every year. <laughs> let's, let's, just, let's, just get, let's just get that one out of the way. It's definitely going to be Bayern. Pavlo, Pavlovich is going to harass Kane too hard in training and shit. Kane's going to obviously dribble on his, on, his, um, on his locker room, like change on his, room shit. On his, on his bib. On his bib and shit. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be just some, something weird. But that is the most Bundesliga game of Spanish football I've ever watched. <laughs> Everything was just, Transition. oh, here's all this space in behind. I'm just going to run here and I'm the defender and I'm not going to, I'm not going to track this guy. Like it was just, both teams were just defending like, like hippies, but I actually think when Madrid defended worse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've never seen Edra Militao run backwards so much. It was, it was obscene, you know, and South of Vigo got to be kicking themselves. They should have yeah. won that game. Yeah. I mean, Ever since Militao came back from his injury, he's been looking crazy. So, yeah, I don't know, man. That guy is just... He's he performed one in the Champions League and then it's just been... Yeah, <laughs> it's just been whatever in it. No. Dad and Girona was 1-0. Um, that game was fun. Mm. Um, Oya Zabal, I love the way they say his name. I wish mm. I could say his name like that, but he got a goal before halftime. But... You could, if you tried. <laughs> my the you're about me cannot pronounce the the way that they say it. i'm sorry <laughs> don't, don't, don't blame us for that that's that's the boss man you please like, <laughs> so you say it's because i was on the avenue <laughs> yeah, yeah all that shit all that two dug shit that's that's the issue <laughs> but yeah it was fun that game was fun can you have anything you want to add about that game not particularly i just um i'm just happy for years he's he's always in the mix 
He's been playing mm-hmm. well this season, but I feel I almost feel like this was maybe his first goal of the season for a club or right. country. I'm not right. sure about that, but mm-hmm. I feel like he plays better than the results than the output. You know, so it's good yeah. to see him actually score a goal. Um, ultimately, I would say I think maybe Girona probably deserved to win this one, but this is football; ain't no deserve. You know, so shout out Sociedad. You know, we like them too, so it's all mm-hmm. good. Atletico Madrid beat Leganes 3-1. Sorloff got a brace in the 69th. Very nice. Mm. And the uh, ninth minute of added time. And guess who scored in between? Um, Antoine Griezmann. Yeah. And you got a red card, which obviously got overturned, which it really rubbed me the wrong way. Despite it being the absolute correct decision, it really fucking pissed me off for obvious reasons. But it was just nice to see common sense prevail here because I'm not sure if there was another league, if it was another league, common sense would have prevailed there. I don't even think they would have they would have even went to VAR to be honest, um, but yeah, it was the most. All three of their goals were just classic Simeone goals. Like there was there was nothing fun about those goals, bro. It was literally it was just economical. Also, they they shot off the part of the stadium where all the racists were. <laughs> oh, that, that makes me sad, bro. That makes me sad. Like, come on. Man. Come on. Where, where are the racists supposed to hang out if they can't exactly, hang out at the football stadium? It's like, come on, man. Now they'll, they'll be in the grocery store with me. I'm trying to be at Costco, just, you know, buy my little hot dogs and shit, and his niggas calling me a nigga behind. Like, come on, man. Put them back in the stadium, please. Please. Come on. El Negrito hot dog. <laughs> uh-uh. There's better El Negro. Ain't no Ito with me. I'm, I'm the big nigger, okay? Please, please, please respect me. Respect me. I, I got I got grades, nigga. I'm the big nigga, okay? <laughs> head honcho. Head nigga in charge. Yeah. HNIC over here. Thank you. Okay, let's go with the France. Monaco Lille was 0 0. Um, Monaco should have scored. Um, Jordan Teaser got a straight red card, but nobody could finish at all. Like, nobody went to score goals. Hmm. So, yeah. Um, but, I mean, it, Monaco was still impressive. Um, Akliush and uh, that Ben Seguro kid, they created yeah. so much in this game. Um, it's, it's kind of a miracle. Even after they went down to 10 men, they were still dominating Lille, which was very surprising to me. It actually had me worried for Lille. I was thinking, is this the same team that beat Real Madrid a couple of weeks ago? Uh, but they Monaco didn't score. So at the end of the day, they'll get their point. There you go. Um, our favorite team, <laughs> Brest and Rennes, 1-1. Uh, they took a lead in the second half, uh, and the titties got deflated in the second half because Rennes scored via Jota equalizer. So, you know, unfortunate for our team. Yeah. Hopefully they bounce back this week and perk up. <laughs> <laughs> PSG for Strasbourg. So I can't make any more breast jokes. I'm done for the day. Um, PSG's got a bunch of just young French random talents. Just a bunch of 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds just running around the park scoring goals. That's really what they just do. Um, yeah. Just why they don't need Javi Simons. You know, they don't really need him like that. Um, especially like Coach said earlier, given the players they bought this summer. Uh, but just let him go, man. Just, just, yeah, just for real, go. man. Let him go play at a place uh, where he's worth it. But uh, this game, the most interesting thing about this game to me was uh, Sekumara, who I liked at Southampton. Um, I think he got relegated with them two seasons ago, I believe. Mm-hmm. And Liam Rosinier, who obviously knows English football a little bit, brought him over to Strasbourg, and he scored a really nice goal in this game. And I was just happy to see Sekumara, I, I wouldn't say get his career back on track, but at least not be at Southampton because we're going to talk about them in a bit. And that is not a place you want to be, you know. No. Uh, Le Havre 0, Leon 4. Um, Malik Fofana, he has four goals and assists in his last four games. He has, Coach, I was talking to you before we started that. He's impressed me a lot. Um, and obviously your boy scored. Like yeah. That. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm, I'm sure Malik Fofana does this specifically for you, Tosin. He does it just for you, you know. Like, yes, just, just for me. Just for you, you know? yeah. Yeah. Shout out to him. <laughs> we'll speak no no English together, just French. That's it. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, Ben Rama scored, or did he score? Ben Rama was around. He yeah, did. he scored. I think he scored the last of the four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, all the all the old prem vets were getting around. There's a time with Rama, I like really really thought he was going to be that guy, but I thought he was oh, that that season before Brentford came up, he was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal the season before yeah, they came up. Know, like, so, so, sometimes you can't separate a player from his soulmate. You know, once you took all the Watkins away from him, it was yeah. over. Yeah. Uh, to Villa. He went to the wrong Clad and Blue Club, West Ham. Mm-hmm. Fucked everything up. Mm-hmm. Shout, Not- shout out to AZ Mate and I as well, man. You know, fulfilling his destiny as a right back. <laughs> <laughs> do you think do you think Mikel Arteta texts him every every like two months like told you nigga? 
<laughs> I knew this way you'd end up. <laughs> Where it's like it's like it's like ghosts from power. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but, but genuinely, I hate to say, I hate to segue a little bit. Do you think if he buckled down and said, "You know what, coach, I want to play, I want to play right back for you," like let me, Tom, show me, show me the way, kind of thing. Do you reckon he'd, he'd still be at Arsenal now? No, I I don't see why not. Actually, <laughs> I think I think he was talented enough. I mean, there's just so much to his game. His temperament yeah. as a player is awesome. Mm. Um, at the time when he when they were going through the little are you yeah. going to do this or not type yeah. thing, we all thought he should do it. Mm-hmm. Like, what's I mean, like, why the point of a career when you come from an academy, mm-hmm. the point is to make a career, and if you can mm-hmm. make it at the club where you started, even better. And mm-hmm. I felt like he just wasn't focused enough at the time to realize the opportunity in front of him, and he let mm-hmm. it go. But I'm glad it all worked out in the end because being at Leon is not a bad thing. That's no, no, that's no. a success. God bless him. A nice kids over there too. So yeah. it's nice. Um, Nantes won, Nice won. Um, nice did all the ro- early run in, not score with another goal. Um, Moses Simon got a contribution. Um, Nice got a nice finish from Evan Gusat, and that was that. Anything you want to add? Yeah, that was uh, this was probably the best game of the weekend in France. Like, a lot of basketballs, like, was just very <laughs> I'm sure they, I'm sure an even game because I think Nice were the better team, especially as their away team. They created so much, but they just couldn't finish. And it took not scoring for them to finally score a goal. Like, oh shit, we might lose this game. But it was just a really entertaining watch, you know. So um, we'll be keeping an eye on these two teams for the rest of the season for sure. Uh, let's go to the Premier League. Tottenham Do four. We have West. to. Yes, I beg. <laughs> Stand up, Joe. Uh, um, Tottenham four, West Ham one. Uh, when West Ham scored their first goal, I was like, oh, they're going to do something. I realized Lopetegui's their coach. And yeah, waiting Sorry. for the no, no. Oh, <laughs> I, I, no, for real. Like, I, I hate this. I hate this Lopetegui slander, you know, because I feel I like do. he's one of the he, He's very unlucky. He is very, very unlucky. And I feel like he's just had things gone the way they should have at, at Wolves. Wolves probably beat City today. But anyway, that's the story for another day. But he's gone to West Ham. He's replacing a, a quite literally a giant. Like he, David Moyes, make mistake, no mistake about, it, is the greatest West Ham coach of all time. <laughs> yeah, let's not whoa, even. Whoa, 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 whoa! Who better? Who better? Alan, Alan Kerbishley. Fuck out! No, 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 no. <laughs> Alan Kerbishley. Alan Kerbishley for Barclays men. Yeah, I hear all of that, and and that's fine. But West Ham were West Ham were, were, were never. Ever. Nah, like, Kirby, Kirby did his best work at Charlton, bro. Yeah, he did. West Ham, I was, man. I was yeah. just being a dickhead. Don't mind me. Fair so, enough. so really and truly, really and truly, it should be Harry Redknapp that would, that would be that would supersede him anyway. But like, you go in there, they've won their first trophy in fuck knows how long. They've got this stadium that they didn't pay for, by the way. Um, they've got like quite a bit of money, you know, to spend or whatever else. David Moyes has left a good squad there for him. You know, they've lost Declan Rice, whatever else, but it doesn't matter. Like they. You know, they're obviously better off without him, clearly. But there's a lot of stuff, you know, that he's got that he's been left with. But the simple fact is, some of the most vital pieces, right, that, that he needed to work with, for example, regardless of what they spent on Fulco or whatever, they're still playing Antonio. You know what I'm saying? Do they still need the striker? Bro, if they're <laughs> buying Mbappe two weeks later, Antonio will be starting again. I don't, it's, it's, it's you, I beg, like, bro, I think it's that, that fake recess hairline he got is just... It just intimidates niggas, and they're like, you know what, coach, he should start. <laughs> you know what, Anto- you know what, Milk Antonio is. Go on. He's Ahmed Musa for West Ham. <laughs> yeah, that, I think I think that's a very, very, very apt actual comparison. And then you look at their midfield. You know, Paqueta is 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 great, obviously, but he's you know he's just I don't know what else he I suppose he needs to do apart from maybe lay some more bets. I don't know, but the base of their midfield is where I feel like there's real trouble at because Sushek is. He's shit to me. Like Alvarez as well. He's not good. Like they they've got problems right through their that like, at the top of their spine. Their striker and the base in midfield. And I that, will go on. Can I can I praise West Ham real quick though? I know we're negative on them. Thank you so much for buying Aaron Wan Bissaka. <laughs> go ahead, finish. <laughs> no, for real. But like, there's there's problems there. And even as a coach, like you can't really. There's only so much you can do when the base in midfield and your starting strikers are enough, regardless. So they 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 got their goal through Kudus kind of thing, and then there was no threat. There's literally no threat after that. It was a lucky goal. So I feel for him. I won't lie. I actually feel for him. And Kudus was going around handing out slaps. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's been three points to me. But 
personally, I felt like he wasn't the right during those incidents. Yeah. Like, you oh, can't, facts. like, I hate the idea that you can't touch a motherfucker in the face because it's a red card if the motherfucker shoved you. It's like, hey, don't shove me, man. Mm. Like, don't, don't shove me. Like, I will hand out slaps, you know, like, and fucking Richarlison, man. The, the fact that that motherfucker finishes even 10 minutes of a game without getting a red card, mm. it's a travesty. The PGMOL, I don't understand what their fascination is with this guy, but he needs to be sent off in every game he plays. He's a cunt, mm. you know. I like him, but he's a cunt. <laughs> yeah, well, Tottenham, they do play basketball, and they... Uh, Kuvaleski, um, give him his, his flowers. He did very well. Um, and James mm. Madison got... Uh, James Madison got hooked at halftime. Yikes. He, he, has, he hasn't finished a, a single game this season. Yeah, you know, and this he's, is, this, he's is, not this, is who, this is who we want to call up before Jamie Gittens. Nah. I'm just I'm just saying that like, nah. you know. Nah, this ain't this ain't the fucking uh, Sunday roast <laughs> table. This is England. Okay. <laughs> Trying to hoop. Yeah. Uh, speaking of hoop, May Night at Brentford 2-1. Uh, I did a little Tosin's talk on that if you want to go listen to that. Um, mm. Y'all can take the stage to talk about this if you want. I have nothing to add. Um, um, you don't? No, I just, no, I just no. want to say, I just want to say this. Um, what, they, what Brentford had, um, had to do for their first goal was genuinely some bullshit. Like, genuinely, it was some bullshit. I don't understand why they couldn't let him back on. He was ready to go, wasn't he? He had blood yeah. in his head, but yeah. I guess. No, no, but he, but no, he came off. He came off, but then he got he got patched up. No, the blood kept leaking again. Like I don't, right. I don't understand why this is a topic of discussion. We all anyway, know if but, the motherfucker is bleeding, they need to be yeah, off the field. Of course, but no, but my understanding was he was fine. To, he was ready to go. He's ready to come back on. So, but he was bleeding. <laughs> no, he came. Let's say he came off, and he was literally watching on the sideline. But so, he was bleeding, so they didn't let him back on. So. I, I don't. Bullshit, I don't think there was an issue there. Okay, like okay. it's just. It's I'm just. Something try, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to hit on the rest, man. Can I hit on the rest in peace? <laughs> you have you plenty of opportunity to do that in a second. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like, like, yes. Um, but yeah, but it, what what I really want to talk about was actually Rashford. Rashford performing from the right hand side of the pitch. Something I haven't seen in a while, to be honest. But I've always said Rashford, regardless of where he plays, he just needs to go. On. Bro, it, it's like Eric Ten Hag. As Tosin said mm. in Tosin's talk, he actually got his tactics right because mm. it was the most obvious thing in the world. Do you know who plays on the right side of Brentford's defense or the left side, whichever side Rashford was yeah. playing on? Ethan yeah. Pinnock. Yeah. Ethan yeah. Pinnock is ACL. finished, man. He's finished. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Rashford, Rashford destroyed a pensioner. Good for him. You know, like we love him on <laughs> no, the but podcast, even, but he got to show me something next week against West Ham. He got <laughs> he got to show me that he can play. He can outplay Aaron Wan Bissaka, then I'll believe in him. <laughs> no, but even even the switches of play to Garnacho, like even regards to the goal, like there's clear to me, it's clear enough that Rashford right now just needs to play simple every time, shoot or cross, get the ball in space and shoot across. That's <laughs> all it is. No, seriously, like you make he's, you he's, make it sound like a like, you, you make it seem like he's a kid in the garden. Take your crayon. No, no, make it. no, no, for, no for all like Marcus Rashford's ball striking will do most of the work for him. Just put him in positions where that's the only thing he has to do. Like genuinely, right at right now, for him to build up his confidence again. That's that's my honest belief. Whether it's on the right or left, or just platform him so that he doesn't do any of the other bullshit. Like when he right now, when Michael, Marcus Rashford is dribbling, now I, I don't know. I just want to turn off my TV. Like it's just I'm not I'm not interested. <laughs> you know? So. All I know is that, like, it's a good win, but you got Jose Mourinho on Thursday. Um, Fulham <laughs> 1, Villa 3. Mm. And guess who plays for them in midfield? Sofian Amarat and Fred. Mm. It's a family <laughs> reunion. <laughs> what did Maya say? The case of the ex. Um, oh, Villa 3, Fulham 1. Um, they got a red card. Uh, Raul Jimenez turned the clock a little bit, and then after that, it was just lights off. Yeah, Ra Raul is back, man. Um, mm -hmm. But this whole, like, I don't... Okay, so I haven't spent a lot of time taking penalties against Emmy Martinez, but... Mm -hmm. Bro, what is wrong with these niggas, man? Like, y'all mm -hmm. just get shook because some guy that twerked a little bit at the World Cup and humped the trophy? Like, mm -hmm. I don't get it, man. It was such a terrible penalty, and that's where the game turned. Once they missed that, it was pretty much over from that point. Go on, coach. I'll, I'll just say, I personally know, I know I'd score a penalty against Emmy Martinez. I, I know it. So these guys have no excuse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and one more point on this game. I, I think it's really, it's, it's a nice thing 
for an Arsenal mm-hmm. fan to see that both teams had their goalkeepers as their captains, and mm-hmm. both goalkeepers are ex-Arsenal goalkeepers, which I don't mm-hmm. know what that means, whether we recruit well or something, uh, but I thought it was awesome. And they were both that playing at true. Arsenal at the same time. Emmy was our Leno's backup, you know. But yeah, they're there now. Neil, Neil Morpé basically should never, ever have to buy a drink in his life, like in certain regions of Argentina, in any part of Argentina, because he essentially gave them the World Cup. So, you know, I don't think he's racist enough for that. So, but you know, <laughs> nice <time. laughs> uh, Newcastle lost to Brighton. And you know who scored that goal? <laughs> The podcast Willow. favorite, Danny Welbeck. That's Danny all I have to Opong add. Welbeck. You know, unfortunately, <laughs> yes. he ended the game with a weird looking injury. Uh, Fabian Schur put an elbow on his back during, like, you know, one of those challenges between mm. a striker and a defender. Pretty standard stuff. But he went down and it was like he couldn't move or some shit. You know, we still don't really know what's wrong with him, but I hope he's okay because Danny's had a rough go of it, you know, with injuries in his career. And it's mm. really unfortunate to seem like that. But, um, yeah, Newcastle, man, they gotta they gotta pray to somebody because they should not have lost this game. They mm. they created enough to to score goals. Coach, this uh, space is for you. What do you usually say when we talk about Newcastle? We can move on. Yes, they deserve to die, and I hope they're burning hell. That's not it. <laughs> also, Tindo, nigga. also, also, fuck Jason Tindall. All right, there, there we go. go. <laughs> <laughs> Southampton two, Leicester three. Um. When you let an Ayewu score on you, you should just be relegated to league, not even league two. Go to non-league football. But, Dean, I know this is something that you want to talk about. I'm going to let you have the floor. Actually, I don't because I, I, I just remember being on my phone and seeing mm. that somehow the game ended 3-2. Like, mm-hmm. it was already bad enough that there was a late comeback for it to be a draw at 2-2. I thought the game was over. I think we all thought the game was over. And somehow yes. I'm seeing highlights later that... Which one of the I uses this? Because there's too many of them. Jordan. There's only two of them, but there's two too many. Jordan, right? No, it's Andre, I think. No, Andre is the, the does, ball. Does, one. It, does it even matter, man? Does it, does it matter? Oh, it's yeah. Jordan. It's Jordan. It's Jordan. Right. It's Jordan. They, they let some, some overrated Ghanaian score against them. So, yeah, they're definitely getting relegated. Ain't, ain't no way. Like, if there was a doubt in my mind before, it's gone now. Like, Do you know when I knew Southampton was going to lose, though? When, when they got promoted? One, no, no, no. One, <laughs> Cameron, Cameron Archer scored. Two Joe Arebo scored. And I was like, oh, okay. That that's these are aberrations. This should not be happening. Yeah, no. Yeah. Joe Arebo doesn't even get caught up to Nigeria anymore. That's how yeah. bad he's become. Which feels a little unfair because one, we need midfielders. And two, I thought he was really good at the Emirates when I watched him the, the other week. You mm. know, like and if you're good enough to stand out against a team like Arsenal, you can probably play for Nigeria, especially since we don't have any fucking midfielders. But you know, mm. whatever. That's that's another point. At least, you know, we're not gonna. Um <laughs> Coach, anything you want to talk about in this game? Um, Jamie Vardy, man, like he just he, he absolutely hates Southampton. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like he, yeah, check his goal record against Southampton, bro. Like, <laughs> has, has he scored against them or against us? I think he we just edge it, but it's yeah. He scored quite a few. I remember, I remember quite a few Jamie Vardy goals against I, I asked that question because Jamie Vardy just seems like he hates everybody. Yes. <laughs> he, <fucking laughs> knows. he just has, he just, he's basically Conor McGregor with less mm. of a cocaine problem. Yeah. That's the energy I get from him. I do like yeah. that though. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Everton beat Ipswich Town 2-0. I got a funny thing that Sean Dyche did in this game. He made one sub. <laughs> He brought on Oliver Mangala. That's it. He didn't make any other changes. Yo, did Michael Keane score in this game? No. Yeah, he did. He did score in this game. Yes, yes, he did. And let me tell you about that goal. Goodness gracious me. He told me to <laughs> shut the fuck up. I don't know what I don't know what I'm talking about. Because it was a finish Aguero would have been proud of. So yeah. Um like, you, if you haven't guys haven't seen it, go check it out. He, Ridiculous he, goal. He tore the roof off the net. I yeah. could not top, be what I was seeing. Top like, net. It was like Joe Arribo scoring. I was like, "What? What is this? Why has this guy been playing?" <laughs> so, so I just I just checked the stats, and Vardy has eleven goals against us, and thirteen against Southampton. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm speaking. I, every time he plays them, I'm pretty sure he scores against them. He, he really hates those fuckers, man. <laughs> he's rude. Yeah. Uh, but in Dai, um, they're number ten. He's good. Yeah, Liman oh, and yeah. Dai, wonderful player. Wonderful yes. player. Yes. He won't be there long. Don't worry about it. No. 
Um, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. This is the Arsenal edition. The podcast is out right now. If you go listen, has Coach Dean and Gabby. If you guys are going to listen, to, well, don't if go listen to it right now. Um, <clears throat> Arsenal lost two zero to Bournemouth. Um, fellas, floor is yours. Everything that could go wrong in that game went wrong. Um, I really have no complaints, though. Uh, mm. I've watched I've watched that game a couple hundred times in my life. Most of them were under Arsene Wenger, you know. So it's it's whatever. Mm. Um, they'll be better in the next game. We move on. It's that simple. First yeah. away loss this whole year. It was going to happen at some point. Um, yeah. I have a question because I saw some Arsenal fan post this. Um, they put mm. their lineup out like you know for your next game. They had, um, I think they had Ben White as right back. Declan Rice is center back. Gabriel. <laughs> no, no. Whatever yeah. the question is, I don't care anymore. No. Yeah. As you, I, because as soon as I saw Rice, I was, I was like, I'm going to ask them because I saw that. I was like, you guys are stupid. But yeah. that's a waste of 100 million. We're not doing that. No. Yeah. Uh, but if, if he plays him center back at any point this season, it's quite literally because every single one of our defenders are injured. Like, literally, I, there is no in, in, way he's playing him in the center. In, including Rob Holding. In, exactly. Like there's, there's, Wherever there's the just, fuck he is. And if you, and if you, and if you were to do it, for example, against Liverpool, it's because he respects Liverpool so fucking much. That's all it is. And I don't think and I don't think he does. I'm not saying that he thinks Liverpool are shit or anything, but I don't, but I don't think he's going to pay them that much respect where he takes out a dog, like... That can rise from midfield. That that hunted that quite literally hunted down McAllister for ninety minutes last year <laughs> to 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 lose that sort of advantage again. I don't think I don't think that it, it's that deep for me. Um, but yeah, the game itself yesterday. Look, the pod is out. I've been I'm so unbothered genuinely, and I feel like I might be broken at this point. Um, losses don't really hurt me, and the last time I felt like this, Emmy was in charge. But it's, this is losses don't hurt me for for. For a different reason this time, and it's because of the magic word process. Like I can accept when we lose when I know the overall picture is so much brighter. Like things like this can happen. Like they can just happen, and shit doesn't go your way. Manager gets it wrong. You know, some players underperform. Some players play well. Whatever. Some players miss chances. It is what it is. I can't accept it when it's a recurring theme and the managers are cunt basically. So. That's all it is. Like I'm, it's football, man. It happens. Like you're not gonna win. You're not gonna win every single game. This isn't Scotland. So, um, to add to you guys quickly, because we'll move on. Um, <laughs> a lot of Arsenal fans need to stop being bitch ass niggas. I don't like talking <laughs> like that. But come on, man. No, keep, Arsenal, going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Nah, Arsenal, like we gonna be bitch ass. It's what we do, man. We we invented being a bitch ass nigga in this football context. <laughs> AFT, that was us. All oh, this is this new wave of internet. You know influencer whatever the fuck and analysis that was arsenal fans like we, we yo we, the original bitch ass nigga that's us and and the, the thing that like blows my mind is just like i'm seeing people see Mikel Arteta out i'm like my nigga <laughs> my nigga do you know what it's like to have a bad manager i will tell you right now i've had a decade worth okay you better relax you have okay, a good, I, yep. let me tell you something about Mikel Arteta like Kim Jong Un or Il or whatever mm. whichever the one that motherfucker is more likely to leave his gig than Arteta leaving mm. Arsenal. So just, mm. just you, you go have touch grass, as the kids say. Go touch grass. You have more <laughs> chance of Cameroon's leader leaving than he does. Yeah. And he's been there since before any of us was born. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. Um, anyways, we can move on now. City, Wolves, 2-1. Whatever, man. Uh, whatever. So, so I'll, 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 say, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Um... The goal itself, I have. So I, but it's, I didn't know they can get any, they could sink any lower. But somebody made a point, and I think they, it was bullshit. By the way, I can't remember who it was, but I think it was a big account. But they made a point that there was a foul on the um them on a counter attack, and I was like, that's not a foul. That's not a foul. It was, I don't, I don't know. Do you know what, you know what attack I'm talking about? Where he's, he's carried it like a good 40, 50 yards. And I think, and I think Kovacic has won the ball off him quite fairly. Yeah, actually. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But that's not a foul. That's not, that's it, not a foul. It's, it's a different phase of play. You got to let that go. It, like. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? The real injustice, literally the real injustice is the simple fact that you can stand, you can stand offside, do what you want kind of thing. The moment you're standing offside and you're interfering with a goalkeeper now, to me, nah. that just seems as if, I can't, I can't, I can't get down with you, coach. Like, this is what we've been seeing. Arsenal, we are notoriously 
Ben White spent an entire season tickling goalkeepers' taints and shit, man. Like, I'm not <laughs> happy. <laughs> and, and by the time the ball was played, Bernardo had gotten the fuck out the way. Mm. Like, he didn't interfere with his vision. He's five foot nothing. Like, I'm sorry, man. I'm not, I'm not having that. Like, the fact that they even flagged that to review it was just silly, to be honest. They but, just but gave him that's, but that's, but that's, that's where I wanted to land because they've asked him to review it and it's like... Every time referees go to the thing, you go to the screen, you know, you know what it means, kind of. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. we thought we knew what it means. You see what I'm saying? Right. And, right, that, and that's where that's where I, that's why I just feel like, mm, you know. I feel that. I feel that. That why, I can get Why do that to us? You know what I'm saying? Like legit, why do that? What's the point? Because it's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what else is funny? Go on. Chelsea. Because oh. they lost Liverpool 2-1. Um, Darwin Nunes had more like recovery tackles than shots on goal today. You know where he, you know who would love that? Mikel Arteta. Bring him yeah. to Bring him to <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, I can't lie. I know some Liverpool fans don't like him. I love Darwin. I don't oh, know why. Man. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a fun time. He's genuinely... He, go on. Go on, coach. No, I'm saying he's box office, man. Like I just enjoy... I just enjoy his... Ex, I, I enjoy experience in Darwin Nunes' pause. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, here here's the here's a talking point from this game for me. I feel like the tackle between Tosin Adarabioyo and uh uh Diogo Jota was very remin there was way more physical contact between mm-hmm. Tosin and Jota than Evan Nilsson and Saliba in the Arsenal Bournemouth game. And it was a last man tackle on the halfway mm-hmm. line with the ball dropped in right behind the defense, with no goalkeeper off his line coming like I don't understand why that was a yellow and the one from yesterday was originally a yellow and got upgraded to a red. Like, what was the difference exactly? PGMO. Yeah. I just didn't see a difference there. That's, that's all I'm saying. Like, oh, Levi Caldwell was there. Okay, well, he was as close to that play as Ben White was to the play yesterday. So I don't get it. I just, I just don't like the inconsistency. But as an Arsenal fan, I'm used to it. I even accept it. I'm calm about it. It's fine. We're still winning the league. Uh, Man. I was I was gonna say the game itself though I was really impressed with Chelsea in in phases. In the I first half, at you. In the first half only. Yeah, in the first half. But there is still a lot of there's still a lot of work for them to do. Like you can see that they they're able to go to these grounds and actually not be over. I wouldn't say control the games because I feel like the game was it was quite even in the first half. But they looked like they belonged there. You know. Uh, they, um. No, go ahead. No, I'll say they look they look like they belong there and. Put it like this: There is. I know Liverpool had some injuries, obviously with Allison, and even in midfield, there was like you know Curtis Jones came in. Like I, I hadn't seen Curtis Jones start a big game in a, in a minute. To be honest, like Curtis. But, Curtis. <laughs> but he, but um, but yeah, like there was a lot to you know, there was a lot, there was a lot to enjoy about Chelsea, especially. I think Maduke was actually quite good. Um, I think yeah, he Kaysedo was. was yeah, I think, I think I think Caicedo was excellent as well. Lavia Lavia was good. Yeah, he was, tidy, was really he was tidy. Good. Yeah, he, he was tidy as well. I think Caicedo was James there. didn't get hurt. Yeah. Ah. He didn't. But you know who did get hurt? Sancho. He got hooked at halftime. That boy was ass. <laughs> <laughs> that boy was ass. Oh, he, was doing a, he was doing a whole bunch of jockey dribbles for 45 minutes. Like, no change of pace, just jockeying. You know, and, uh, you, know, you know him and Grealish are, are basically the same player at this point. Yep. It's actually not, it's not even funny. And they're both light-skinned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was, I was you, you know, the reason why I denoted Sancho is because I was like, why does Trent look like a good right back today? Why does Trent actually look like Gary Neville defending? I'm I'm shocked. And then I realized, oh, he's against Sancho. Makes sense. I buy Joe. So, no, S- you know, might you know, be, how much of that, real quick though, you know, I think one of the good things that Maresca did in this game was that he played Malo Gusto on the other side because Reese James came in. So he played him on his wrong foot, which is a gambit that I feel like Arteta was probably the first to bust out against Suela. He put um, Tomiyasu against him. Mm-hmm. So a right footer as a left back. So I think generally with Sancho, if you want him to play well, you need an overlapping fullback to combine mm-hmm. with him. And if mm-hmm. the overlapping fullback is more focused on marking Mohamed Salah, and when he does come forward, he's cutting infield because his strong foot cuts him infield naturally, then you're going to get a performance like that. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean he wasn't asked, but I do think they're mitigating factors. I mean, yeah, there's obviously context behind it, but 
don't give a fuck about no context, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nah, jokes aside, it was it's true. It's like you know, Malagusto is definitely a right footed guy who played in the left. Which, by the way, Lissandra Martinez played left back. I forgot we talked about that. Uh, we didn't talk about that, but yeah, that's interesting to see that he played out there this weekend. But Actually, that's where he should play every every week. That's where he belongs. You know what he should play, honestly, on the bench. But this neither here nor there. <laughs> um, let's go to the Champions League this week. We got some games that I think will be fun. Uh, Arsenal shocked there. Um, that's not good. Not interested. You're not interested in that. No. Okay. Do, do you guys let, let us know in the comments? Do you guys want to do a match day in the live? Um, I can. I mean, are I, you going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, good stuff. Don't ask them, just do it. Yeah, um, just let us know in the comments and shit. Like, uh, you know, anybody wants to jump on with us, you know, I'm more than happy to just let us know. Kind of yeah. out. happy to do it. So, yeah. We have Juventus Stuttgart. Um, very interested in that one. Two young, talented managers. So, that's going to be fun. We have the rematch of the Champions League final Madrid versus Dortmund. That'll be fun. Yeah, this is this is what the kids wanted, right? You know, these yeah. games, these games in the group stages. I don't give that's... a fuck about this. Yeah, yeah. I don't. We have our boys breast against Leverkusen. Um, mm. So breast accusing, mm, delicious. Mm-hmm. We have the battle of Jurgen Klopp's heart 2.0, Leipzig versus Liverpool. Mm. So Jurgen Klopp, where can, where can you be in attendance? Uh, where's the game? Are you asking me? You know what it's reading off. You asking me? Let's have a look. Let's have, let's have a look. Let's have a look. I think. Wait, Liverpool played their last game. Actually, wait, I'm gonna look. Okay, it's in Red Bull. Yeah, I think he should be there. Um, I think he should be there because if he goes to Liverpool, they might stone him. Um, they're not too happy with uh, his, his choices. Mm. A bag's a bag, man. Uh, Barca versus Bayern, as we mentioned, that's another game. Very interesting that one. And last but not least, Atletico Madrid and Lille. Yeah, that's gonna be you know, fun. Maybe Lille were saving their legs for this game. I, I hot take. I back them to surprise Atletico in this game. Fuck all the Madrid teams up. Fuck it. <laughs> they gonna get. They gonna get. They gonna have fun. That's what's gonna happen. Y'all got anything you wanna add that you noticed from this weekend? Um, not particularly. I just wanna make the point that I know that I owe some people some packages. Uh, pause. Um, and those will go out now that I'm back in the country. Those will be going out later this week. You know, so you can still expect your gifts. I'm sorry about the delay. I just had a lot of shit to do that didn't involve sending you free shit. You know. It's not like you did anything, but all you did was answer some questions about a podcast you listened to. Uh, I don't owe don't really y'all nothing. Okay, I got y'all. Okay, I'm done. Coach? No, just Tony Adams just taking time out to, to shit on Tottenham again. You know, <laughs> literally, literally, he said this weekend, look, if Tottenham can get to a final, anybody can. It's just like, have you forgotten that we got to a final before then? <laughs> like, of course we know that already, you know, but he's saying that, you know, we can win the league and the Champions League this season, which tells me that he's back on the source, but he might actually be talking. He might actually be talking sense. But yeah. yeah well, me. listen. At the end of the day, football is going to football. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, for myself, Tosin, Dean, and Coach, we're out. Everyone, take it easy. Peace. 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 Take a shot. Take a shot. Take a shot.